Uh, I am probably going to wander while I talk. If anybody has trouble hearing me in the back because of lack of a mic, I'll come back and tie myself to the mic. But uh, I, I prefer generally to, I tend to walk and think and talk at the same time. They don't always mesh precisely, but, <laughs> but I try. Uh, I, just, I tend to do this in an ad hoc fashion. Uh, feel free to ask questions as we go along. I may put you off for a moment uh, if you do. And uh, I'll, I'll try to remember to get back to you. As Bob said, I uh, was 32 years with the old INS. Uh, I am compelled to point out that six months after I retired, INS was dissolved and I was formed. It's been downhill ever since. Now there's a connection. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Immigration is an extremely sensitive subject to this uh, country because immigration is important to the country, but we cannot afford to ignore the price that it can extract from the individual in this country. Uh, and employment is a, a perfect example of that. Let me preface a remark here by saying, can, can you hear me over if I'm out of the mic? Okay. Uh, <coughs> You'll hear me refer to Americans as I'm talking about this subject. And when I say American, I mean American citizens and our honored legal guests who have tied their future <coughs> to ours legally. If I mean citizens, I'll say citizens. Words mean things, and definitions tell you what they mean. Citizen means born in the United States or naturalized. Alien means a person who's not a citizen of the United States. It's not a pejorative term. It's a legal term, and I use it freely. I spoke to 200 kids in four sessions at Davis High School yesterday. And that personally kind of went like that when I said alien, and then I explained some legal word. It's a def there's a definition for it. And I said, we're okay with it. Uh, illegal, as uh, I think it was Joe said, uh, defines a situation, a status, precisely. Uh, let me go on with uh, the, the major topic here. I, I may have to stop and make these little explanations once in a while. Immigration laws exist for four reasons. People are not commonly taught that. It's not something you'll find in a book anywhere. But in the process of working with immigration laws for 32 years, okay, I'm getting simple signals from the back. In the process of uh, And, and excuse me, but if you're having a hard time hearing, there's several uh, dozen seats up here, so just <coughs> come on up. Don't be afraid. In the process of working with immigration for 32 years, I, what I discovered uh, over time was that the immigration law books, which stack up about this thick, uh, reduce themselves to these four elements. Immigration laws exist to protect the United States, to protect the United States. Uh, public health, people with contagious diseases at one time were not allowed to come into the United States. In some cases, they're still barred from entry except under special circumstances. Immigration laws exist to protect national security. We need only point to 9-11 to see what I'm talking about when I say that. Every one of those people were admitted legally to the United States, and we simply didn't track them. Now, Going back 30 years or 40 years when I started my career, I can tell you this. When I was in Miami with Border Patrol, for instance, if we were not actively patrolling, we were out looking and knocking on doors for people who had come into the United States saying they were going to do a particular thing. They were given a form they were supposed to surrender when they left. Mm -hmm. And if they didn't turn the form in, we went looking for them. And we found them about half the time. That's been dead for 20 years. Nobody does that anymore. We have no idea who's here or what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But if somebody had paid any attention at all to those students not doing what they were supposed to do, we probably could have forestalled 9-11. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure there are people in the room that have heard that one of the flight schools told the FBI, hey, I got a guy here who wants to learn how to take airplanes off, but he doesn't care about learning how to land. <laughs> I got the truth. It's a yeah. story. It is true. Uh, the FBI said, yeah, okay, well, whatever. Uh, because he was just a foreign student. Well, it's not how it works. Mm -hmm. Issue number three 
that uh, is eager to protect uh, why they exist to protect us is public safety. <coughs> we all know the, the litany of woes that results from uh, illegal evidence committed crimes in this country. Because, and this is changing over time, say 10 years ago, when I ran the immigration office here from 85 to 92, uh, the predominant demographic for illegal aliens, particularly in this area, whether Mexican or otherwise, was young, single, adult males. Now, to the degree you want to blame crimes on illegal aliens, blame it on that demographic. Yes, of course, they are overrepresented in crime figures because of what the demographic was at the time. Now, it's still a significant problem. But even if they are not overrepresented in the population as criminals, why should we have to put up with it at all? Mm -hmm. So let's make sure we are tracking down and getting rid of them. The government is making a, a reasonable push to keep track of them in the jail. What is not being done is acting proactively on some of this stuff. Yes, there are immigration officers on drug task forces, things like that. Uh, but anymore, there is very little street level contact between cops and immigration officers. And it's, <coughs> excuse me, often due to the police department attitudes, but just as often it's due to the attitudes on the part of ICE responding to the administration's demands. Mm -hmm. The practical effect of that, those, this lack of interest, is that an illegal alien in the United States has nothing to fear about being caught, period. In the story, he just doesn't. Once he's passed the order, he's home free under today's enforcement regimen. Now the last item, and the one that I'll speak to primarily here is immigration laws exist to protect American jobs, the domestic labor market. We often think that illegal aliens work cheap and depress wages. That's not how it works. The difference is subtle, but it matters. Sweat is a commodity, just like diamonds or anything else. And law, supply, and demand says as the commodity becomes more available, it becomes cheaper. Now, for 30 years, the United States has had an oversupply of labor. People say we have a labor shortage. That could not be more wrong. We have no labor shortage. We have an oversupply of labor. I'll give you a good example. The best way to, to, uh, to measure an oversupply is the impact on the cost. Let's take construction wages in Seattle. This is out of a two-year-old study that the Seattle Times did on uh, residential construction when we were having the boom over in Seattle. It was estimated that illegal aliens filled 90% of the unskilled and semi-skilled construction jobs over there. I knew personally two guys, one raw wall hanger and one rough carpenter, who had quit working when their wages went from $19 an hour to 11 it was better for them to go on to unemployment. And that is the result of an oversupply of labor. Construction wages for semi-skilled and unskilled bought less two years ago than it did in 1973. Wages have remained stagnant in unskilled and semi-skilled construction. Those are areas in which illegal living predominate now. So when we say they work cheap, no. They create cheap wages, is what they do, by an oversupply. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. That's, that's an important point to try to, to, uh, to bring up to people. Mm -hmm. That you're explaining. 